Hey guys, welcome to the video. Thank you guys for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Uh, so this deck is something that is very near and dear to my heart. It's something that I came up with uh, a while ago, actually, when I was looking at Mushroom Tower and just trying to figure out other fun stuff that could be done with it. I looked at, uh, what's that one card? Um, uh, Siege, Siege of Stros Mackay. I uh, looked at that, played with Mushroom Tower with that for a bit. It was really fun. I mean, it's not, obviously everybody knows about that, but I was thinking like, what are more things that I could use with Mushroom Tower that would be super fun? Uh, if you're looking here, Unstoppable Rage, that's a really fun one. But really what the most fun that I've had with Mushroom Tower is, is with the Skeever Infestation card. Now, if you don't know what this is, that's okay. It's a very niche card. It's very weird, but uh, it's a three cost action and it summons a Skeever in each lane with power and health equal to the number of infestations you've played. Then you shuffle two copies of this into your deck. So Skeever Infestation can get really powerful, especially when you're using Mushroom Tower, because you can spawn some Skeevers, then you can sacrifice one of them using Betray, and then you can spawn even more powerful Skeevers, shuffling even more infestations into your deck. So Skeever Infestation is really fun. I highly recommend it. Uh, just trying to play this combo a few times uh, is really fun. It, it's very hard to do. You'll see in the video, we have a lot of losses. I'm actually recording this. Uh, I'm recording this part last because I wasn't sure how successful of a run I was going to have recording. And I didn't want to waste my time recording a deck explanation for gameplay that might not even be uploaded. So uh, here we go, just kind of me from the future technically explaining how this deck works. I'm going to go through every little piece, that way you kind of understand what we're getting into as we go into the video, and then you'll be able to hopefully follow along and understand what we're, what we're trying to do here. So... Rapid Shot, deal one damage to a creature. If it survives, draw a card. Really, what we're trying to do with this deck is get two cards. We're trying to get the Mushroom Tower and the Skeever Infestation. Everything else is kind of optional. Really, we want the Necromancer's Amulet on board as well, but we're searching for kind of two, three cards. Rapid Shot is going to help us get there by being a very good source of draw for us. You'll notice that we have quite a few ways to draw in this deck. Uh, quite a few interesting ways as well that I normally wouldn't put in in some decks but i felt like it worked appropriately for this one so yeah rapid shots kind of our first chain of draw so we're going to be playing from behind for a lot of the a lot of the games you'll notice and barrow stalker is a great way to kind of help us get back later on if we can uh, wipe our opponent's board and just get a barrow stalker on to get a few hits on our opponent or a few hits on some enemy creatures that's great because then we're just getting some of that health back Barrow Stalker also serves as a guard, so it'll block up a lane for us should we need to use her in that way, and it's just a very good flex kind of utility card. It can be used for offense or for defense. I run one Fear Totem. I'm not exactly certain why I did this. Uh, like, I think I liked the idea of using Fear Totem with the Mushroom Tower, but I really only fit one in here, and I'm not sure if there's a specific reason for that, but I do like the one Fear Totem here. You have to be a little bit selective when you use it, but it can be a really good tool in your repertoire to just pull this thing out on somebody because you can use it on yourself or on enemy creatures. So sometimes you just need to bump something back into your opponent's hand and Fear Totem is the perfect card to do that with. Uh, I believe we get some use out of Fear Totem in the video coming up and uh, you'll kind of see what I mean there. Green Pact Ambusher. So I love these cards. Uh, Prophecy, guard, at the end of your opponent's turn, if they have a full lane and Green Pact Ambusher is in your hand, summon her to that lane. So one thing that I really love to do with Green Pact is to use Galen the Shelterer's summon ability on her, and then we get three extra copies of her in our in our deck. And uh, for one, that'll up our prophecy count. And for two, that, that just makes it even more likely that we have multiple of these in our hand. So if our opponent ever gets to uh, four cards in one lane, then the Green Pact Ambushers will start spawning, which is really cool. They're not the most effective guard in the world, considering that they only have one health, but what they do almost always is they're able to kill the creature that they're blocking if they don't find some way around it. So they serve as kind of a one-time use guard that can be uh, used to surprise attack your opponent when they think that they have the edge on you, which is really fun. I, I think that uh, a lot of people do play this card, and there's a good reason for it. It's just a very solidly statted, fair-priced card. Squish the Wimpy, uh, this is pretty fun. We have a number of creatures, and by a number I mean like two, really. But we have a few creatures that have uh, 
that have slay effects in our deck. So it's good to kind of have a squish the wimpy in your deck. It's really a good way to like instantly get that slay ability that you want on the board because a majority of the time if you play like a venom tongue in one lane, then your opponent is just going to play in the other lane simply. So squish the wimpy will help connect with some of those cards and it will also just serve as kind of a source of removal. So if our opponent is playing something like let's say a Hafinger Marauder goes down in the shadow lane. I don't remember if that happens in the video or not, but we could use even a Blood Crazed Daedroth, which only has three attack, but that's enough to kill a Hafinger Marauder. So we can just kind of squish the Wimpy on that and uh, make it go bye-bye. So that's a, it's a fun little thing for us to do. Uh, the Night Mother there. So the Night Mother is part of our support combo. This thing actually does go off fairly frequently when I play. Like I don't, Again, I recorded a few days ago, so I don't remember exactly if it goes off in the video, but it's a really fun card to just have in any deck. I would highly recommend it. The ability is just fun in and of itself, and it kind of makes a uh, a ticking clock for your opponent. They don't want this thing to go off, so rather than using an Edict of Azura on one of your bigger creatures, they might use it on this card instead. It can kind of be like a false... Um, kind of be used to like trick your opponent into hitting this with something instead of the next card that you're going to put down that might be something even worse, you know? Anyway, the Night Mother, uh, I'll read the ability for you. It's um, summon a 0-1 target with guard for your opponent, so that's an activate effect and it's unlimited. And then, when 20 enemy creatures have died, you deal 20 damage to your opponent, gain 20 health, and draw up to 10 cards. So up to is going to fill your entire hand back up to full, basically. The Night Mother's just, uh, it's a really fun effect. It's not really an OTK ability because it only does 20 damage. It certainly can insta-kill your opponent if they're at 20 or below, but the Night Mother's real fun is in like the draw potential and the health gain that she has. So I really enjoy this card. I try to throw it in decks when I'm just trying to have a good time. And uh, I usually think that we can get it off, especially because we're spawning so many Skeevers and uh, there's going to be a lot of our creatures on the board that are able to kill a lot of his creatures on the board. We've also got stuff like the Red Year and Unstoppable Rage to annihilate large amounts of his own creatures. So I just kind of thought that it fit in this deck pretty well. That's all. Uh, Blood Craze Daedroth. So this is another source of our draw. Summon, draw a card if there's a wounded creature in this lane. Frequently, like I said before, kind of with the Night Mother, we have all these... Uh, Skeevers on the board that are going to be able to attack creatures for it. So Blood Craze Daedroth, it just kind of fits the bill with the draw that we need and the amount of damage that we're going to have on the board at all times. So Fork of Heripolation, it's a minus two plus zero, and it has the slay effect of sacrificing the Fork of Heripolation and drawing three cards. So the Fork, really good draw tool. Uh, you can throw it on cards like Night Talon Lord and Dark Seducer, but you can't get some circumstantial value out of putting it on like a Galen or a Tree Minder, not a Tree Minder, don't do that to a Tree Minder, uh, a Galen or like maybe a, a highly statted Skeever if you have a bunch of these on the board. So Fork of Heripolation, pretty good card. Uh, I'd recommend at least playing with it. It's pretty fun overall. Galen the Shelterer. So uh, we talk about Galen almost every deck at this point. I love playing with Endurance Colors, so he's he's in a lot of my decks. Um, summon. Choose a creature or item in your hand. Shuffle three copies of it with plus three, plus three into your deck. This can actually be used for the Fork of Her Appellation. So we can get the Fork to be, uh, what is it, a, a one, three? <laughs> Negative numbers, you know? So we can get it to be a one, three, and then when we put it on a creature, it'll actually buff it a little bit, and then we'll be able to get the kill afterwards. So it's a, it's a pretty cool effect. And Galen not only works with the Fork of Heripolation, obviously, but he works with a great many cards in the deck. So I always like having more Barrow Stalkers, especially stronger Barrow Stalkers for more drain and better guards. Uh, I like having more Daedroths to draw more. I like having more uh, Dushnik Yal Archers or Shadowfen Priests to destroy uh, stuff like supports. Um, and then I like having more Night Talon Lords, obviously. Those are kind of fun if you can afford to do it. And Cicero's never a bad option because he's got that huge draw potential, and then he's just kind of a monster when you bring him back with that, uh, what is it, 4-9 stat line? So pretty good card. Uh, Galen, that is. And uh, I always like to throw him in my decks. So yeah, there's Galen. Necromancer's Amulet. Okay, when a friendly creature dies, gain one health. This is such a simple, simple card, but it is such a good card. Uh, Necromancer's Amulet could honestly be a legendary card, and I would be okay with it because its effect is just very, very good. Uh, basically, we're going to be killing a lot of Skeevers with our own Mushroom Towers, and then we're just going to be killing them by crashing them into our opponents too. So 
Skeevers are going to be dying. We're going to be gaining health. If we can get uh, three of these on the board at one time, that's going to be crazy. But uh, two is usually the norm with the Necromancer's Amulets, and that's more than enough. I mean, you're getting rewarded for your creatures dying. It's a really, really, really good effect. And uh, you kind of need the right deck for this to work really well. But let me tell you, this is the right deck. So Necromancer's Amulet will be getting a lot of value from all of the cards that we're playing. We already talked about Skeevers, so I'm just going to pass right on down to Treeminder. Treeminder is also a very simple card. It's a guard, and it gains you max magicka. It's one of the weakest guards in the game, but it's okay because you're just playing this to get that extra magicka bonus, and we want more magicka in this deck because we're trying to eventually get up to stuff like Mushroom Tower, Dark Seducer, Unstoppable Rage, the Red Year, definitely, and uh, Night Talon Lord. So really all the late end stuff we can just access it sooner if we have cards like tree minder and our venom tongue right here which is lethal it's a one four stat line for four and the slay is gain plus one max magicka we only run two tree minders and two venom tongues because we have a few other ways to gain uh, magicka in the deck so with these guys on board it'll just be kind of a little bit of insurance to make sure that we get more magicka when we need it Dishnikyal Archer, we also run two of these because we also run two Shadowfen Priests, so I didn't want to overdo it with the support removal. In total, we have four ways to remove supports. I kind of like to split my support removing cards up like this when I play Warrior, but yeah. Dishnikyal Archer, it's got that one damage that can be used for utilities, and it's got the destroy an enemy support on it, which is just fantastic. It's also a guard, which is very helpful to just kind of stall your opponent a little bit when you need them to stop hitting your face. I really like Dishnikyal Archer. I think it's a fantastic card. Hist Grove. Uh, this is an ongoing support, so summon plus one max magicka, and then at the start of your turn, if you have 15 or more max magicka, sacrifice this to summon a 8-8, eight, eight, sorry, an 8-8 eight, eight Swamp Leviathan in each lane. So we have three Hist Groves and two Tree Minders. The least amount of magicka that we can have with this is, uh, what, 17? If our Venom Tongues don't hit anything, we can get 17 magicka because you can cap out at a total of 12, and then we can get the Hist Groves and Tree Minders. So it's more likely than not that we will summon Swamp Leviathans. Uh, just in general, playing these decks, uh, you're going to have a lot of Magicka, so you can kind of count on that, provided that your opponent does not destroy the Hist Grove, which does happen more frequently than I would think. I mean, Hist Grove is like, it's a good card, but I don't... I I've seen a few people prioritize this when there's stuff that they could have prioritized better and i think you'll see that in this video where someone destroys my hist grove instead of one of my other cards which they probably should have gotten rid of so uh we'll talk about that when we get there i'm sure little girl at the start of your turn little girl changes into a 5-5 ageless vampire with drain this is of course a reference to babette in skyrim and uh i like this card a lot i think that it's really fun it kind of has a it's got like a high risk high reward type thing so the 5-5 ageless vampire with drain really good card uh, but putting that little girl on the board first just makes it so much harder to actually get value out of this because little girl is susceptible to almost every form of removal except for Fell the Mighty. So it, you just have to look out for this thing. I mean, when you play it down, expect it to be removed. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Huh? 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 Stop it. So Disciple of Namira is our next card. Uh, this card used to be disgustingly overpowered. I'm sure that some of you remember that. Uh, but its effect right now is at the end of each turn, draw a card for each friendly creature that died in Disciple of Namira's lane. So Disciple of Namira uh, really helps us draw cards. I mean, we've got our Skeever infestations. We've got Betray, so a lot of cards are going to be dying. It is a five cost, though, and its effect is very conditional on what's happening with your kind of board state and your opponent's board state so i'm only running two i didn't want to overfill the deck with disciples of namira because if you have three of these in your hand at once that's not helping anybody so uh two is like a pretty good number for cards that are like this in any deck in my opinion that are kind of like they're good but they're not essential uh just kind of lower it to one or two you don't need you don't always need to be running three of every kind of card i mean look at unique cards you know you just run one it'll be okay you'll survive so Disciple of Namira, it's a good card for draw, and again, we are just looking for really two or three main cards in our deck. Cicero the Betrayer is our next card. He's a six cost, one six creature with lethal and slay. Draw two cards. Cicero can attack friendly creatures. So the Cicero can attack friendly creatures is not a part of the slay effect. It's uh, it's just part of his card 
you know, being around, he can do that. So one thing that's fun with Cicero is that if we have skeevers on the board that are low health and damage enough, he can just kill them. And then we could like squish the wimpy on something else, kill something else. And then we can gain like six cards in one turn with him. It's, it's really fun. Or really like four, uh, four cards in one turn with him. He's also a fantastic target for unstoppable rage, uh, which we'll get to in a second, along with the Venom Tongue and uh, Night Talon Lord. Those are all really the reasons that I run one copy of Unstoppable Rage are these three creatures. So uh, they're really cool, and uh, Cicero's a lot of fun. I feel like a lot of people forget the fact that he can actually attack your own creatures. So if you're going to run Cicero in any of your decks, plan for that. Try to have like uh, low attack creatures that he can actually make use of killing. Just a thought. Okay, Journey to Sovngarde. Shuffle all creatures from your discard pile into your deck and give them plus five, plus five. I simply thought that this would be funny if I had just a bunch of skeevers in my deck. Like, if you get this card to go off, you can get your skeevers extraordinarily high, and then you play Journey to Sovngarde on any of them that have died, and if they come back, it's like, it's game over for your opponent, basically. So, uh, that's why we're running this. It's... I mean, it's nice to bring stuff back like the Green Packed Ambusher and Galen and uh, Little Girl or Angel's Vampire if she's shifted into that. Like, there's a lot of pretty high value cards in our deck, and I think that having a uh, at least one Journey to Sovngarde in our deck is uh, is valuable. You know, Dark Seducer. Okay, so it has Drain and Guard. Dark Seducer drains on both turns. This is one of those cards I'm only running two of. I didn't think that we needed all three just because I wanted to fit in one Night Talon Lord instead. Uh, kind of more of an offensive drain card than a defensive drain card, but Dark Seducer certainly works as a switch card. The only thing with Dark Seducer that kind of, depending on how you look at it, limits its potential is the fact that it has guard. Because uh, Dark Seducer drains on both turns, that's great. Uh, but with the guard, that means that you can't hide it in the shadow lane for a turn, so it will always be susceptible to things like Territorial Viper. Uh, so that way it just gets insta-killed immediately, which is fine. I mean, it's okay that uh, Dark Seducer is killable. You know, is <laughs> like you don't want a card that's going to be able to survive forever, obviously. That would be no fair. But uh, Dark Seducer in its own right is a very good card. The Drain and the Guard both are a core part of how the card works. So uh, I don't know why I went off on that tangent. I, I really love Dark Seducer. I don't think that there's anything wrong with that card, but I think that that's maybe one negative that you could kind of argue for Dark Seducer not being the best card that there is, you know? Anyway, it's a good card. It helps us stay alive, and anytime that we get to play one, it's it's really fun. Uh, Unstoppable Rage. Okay, I kind of went over this already, but a friendly creature deals damage equal to its power to all other creatures in its lane. So this can be really fun when you pair it with a Mushroom Tower, because you get two uses then of uh, Unstoppable Rage on a lane. So let's say that you have something like a... Uh, I don't know, you have a Venom Tongue, that'll, that'll clear out a whole lane, and the Slay effect will actually work for cards that you own as well. So if a Venom Tongue kills three Skeevers in our lane, that's three Magicka that we just gained, which is pretty high value, honestly. So uh, always keep that in mind, that Unstoppable Rage can be paired with, uh, with Slay creatures very well, and uh, it can be paired with just big attack creatures too. I mean, Breakthrough is another thing that Unstoppable Rage is fantastic on. Uh, but yeah, Unstoppable Rage, we only run one because it's a very conditional card uh, in the deck that we're running. Like, you you really only need one good Unstoppable Rage, but if you can get it with a Mushroom Tower out, that's really cool too. Uh, okay, Mushroom Tower. So for those who don't know, Mushroom Tower uh, allows your actions to have Betray. I think I discussed this uh, already, this has kind of been a long deck explanation, at least for me, because I've been stumbling over my words and I've been editing all of that out. But uh, Mushroom Tower here basically just allows our actions to be played twice, provided that we have a creature on board already. And the way that that'll work with the rest of our deck is uh, we kill a creature, we gain health, and we get to play in effect twice. So it's a really, 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 really good combo, just in general to have. I mean, Mushroom Tower is a great card. It's another card, honestly. It could be a unique legendary uh, in its own right. Like, it's very, very good. But I'm glad that it's not, so that way I can play multiple of them, because I always like to have one backup, because this thing kind of gets eliminated pretty easily. Uh, your opponents will... If they see one, you know, they'll immediately get rid of it, which is what I would do, too. I'm, I'm not going to let people play with the Mushroom Tower. Like, this thing's kind of OP, so... Uh, you just have to look out for it. Thankfully, we're not using this for... Uh, we're, we're using this for 
sort of meme potential in this deck, although I think that you'll find that this deck is a lot better than you would assume that it is once it gets going. But with that said, it's uh, this deck also does have a lot of problems, and I'm, I'm willing to let you know that right out front. But yeah, Mushroom Tower, very fun card. We have 13 actions in the deck, but really... Uh, with the Skeever Infestations, it's kind of a new action every time because it's pulling new Skeevers. So we do have a lot of, uh, of actions in the deck eventually once this thing starts popping off really well. And uh, we'll be getting some high value out of the Mushroom Tower, I think. Actually, I know because I've played the matches already. <laughs> so Night Talon Lord is up next. It's a Vampire. I don't know why I pointed that out, but it's, a, it's an 8-8 eight, eight for 9 and it has Drain. And the Slay effect... Maybe the best slay effect in the game is summons the slain creature. So uh, you can basically just steal anything with this card. I mean, it can kill. Its potential to kill stuff is very high with that 8-8 eight, eight stat line. And especially if you combo it with a Squish the Wimpy or an Unstoppable Rage. For those of you that were keeping track before, if we throw down our two Tree Minders and we're at 12, that'll bring us to 14. Then three Hist Groves will bring us to 17. And then Unstoppable Rage plus Night Talon Lord is 17 Magicka. So... This is the combo that we really want to get going if we are to use Unstoppable Rage. Not that it's going to work every time. Uh, sometimes combos in the deck just don't pop off because you don't have the opportunity to use them. So uh, that's okay to prepare for that, but just uh, it's also okay to prepare for you know, the best case scenario rather than the worst case. So Knight Talon Lord, a uh, very versatile card. We can get a lot of value out of it if we play him correctly. And you kind of want to play this card when your opponent is low on cards because you don't want them to have like 10 cards, then you play this down, then that's just more uh, more potential for them to have a Piercing Javelin or some way to remove the Night Talon Lord. You kind of want to push your opponent to the edge and then start playing your big stuff once they're behind. That's kind of the way that the game works. It's all about board control, or at least it was more about board control uh, back in the day. Now it's kind of about who can play the most overpowered card first, and uh, that's how you win. But I'm a fan of board control. That's how I like to play. I like to have a crazy board state that my opponent can't really handle. Uh, so, yeah, Night Talon Lord's very fun for that kind of board control game. And lastly, we have the Red Year. I shit you not, I have never seen the Red Year in my opening hand so many times. The Red Year shows up so much in this video, it's insane. Uh, it's... A really fun card. Unfortunately, we don't run the Encano combo in this in this deck, but the Red Year does get us a lot of value. Let's say that we have a whole lane of cards. We can kind of just play the Red Year on it, and then Necromancer's Amulet just explodes with value because we gain a ton of health for killing our own creatures, and we gain a bunch of board advantage from wiping our opponent's slate clean. So the Red Year, uh, I'd say most times, is a full board clear. It's not every time, obviously. The deal 10 damage to each creature, like in some crazy item decks, uh, where your opponent can get their creatures like extraordinarily high, you won't be able to kill them with this. But other than that, in that niche kind of scenario, the Red Year can kill most creatures. Um, hypothetically, if you were to get a Skeever up to 11, uh, then the Red Year could not kill them either, which is maybe a spoiler alert for something happening later. But yeah, so uh, this is Support Skeevers 3. I named this Betray Skeevers a long time ago, uh, but I like Support Skeevers more because this deck really does heavily rely on the Mushroom Towers and the Necromancer's Amulet, and the Hist Groves are honestly really helpful too. So uh, Support Skeevers 3, that's the video. I think uh, for today, I wanted to ask you guys if there are any other games that you would be interested in seeing on the channel. I do want to branch out a little bit. I know that Legends is the reason that most of you are here. I've done polls on this stuff. I totally get that, too. I, I enjoy making the Legends videos. It's just, uh, I think that it'd be fun to have more of a variety of content as well. So I was thinking maybe like Second Channel or something like that. I play a ton of games. Uh, I just bought a bunch from the Steam Summer Sale as well. And uh, I was just wondering what kind of games you guys might be interested in watching. Uh, if any of you would be interested in watching anything else, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my, my question for you. So other than that, I will let you guys kind of go into the comments and then we can talk from there and I will see you guys on the other side. All right, we're up against Play It As D Cadiz. And they're the adorable, they're on Ebonheart. We'll see if we can combat them with some Skeever action. Okay, this hand, <laughs> there are parts I like and there are parts I don't like. Parts I like, Necromancer's Amulet and the Red Year. Part I don't like is Dark Seducer. 
I like having the red year in my opening hand because that tells me that I can play a little bit more recklessly and then reset the board if we are to make it to turn 10. So really like when you have this, your your goal is to make it to turn 10. It's the same thing with uh, that god awful card, A New Era. You're just trying to make it to turn 11 when you have A New Era sometimes. And then once you play that, you kind of win. So there's no guarantee that we just instantly win when we play the red year, but it will at least help us help us survive. <laughs> okay, Venom Tongue. Pretty standard Ebonheart stuff going on here. I think we'll Hist Grove. Try to get our Magicka total up a little bit higher. That way when we get to our stuff like Mushroom Tower, we can actually play it. Clockwork Dragon. Okay, so Clockwork Dragon kind of has to go. So we'll silence that. Then I'll rapid shot this. Okay. I actually probably should have rapid shot at the dragon. Now that I think about it. I guess it doesn't really matter. But now we get double blood crazed, so we get cards drawn. East Empire Crafter. Okay, yeah, this is going to be a very fun board to nuke. We'll do that. We'll do that. There's our Mushroom Tower. So we'll do that. There's another Blood Crazed Daedroth. So just kind of digging through the deck right now. It's good that we've got our Necromancer's Amulet on board too, so that way when these guys die, it's providing a purpose for us. And honestly, now that we have Mushroom Tower, I'm okay to start investing my deck. He doesn't have uh, access to Piercing Twilight. I tried playing this deck earlier a little bit while I was uh, in the bathroom at work, and this guy played Piercing Twilight on me, and it was just like, it was so demoralizing, I just left. Because he's he took all the Skeevers out of my deck, so there just wasn't even a point to playing it anymore. Okay, I was not expecting that, but... It's very interesting. Die like a dog. Can we make it to turn 10? Or I guess turn 9 or something for me. Uh, I think the play is we kill this thing. Try to block him up a little bit. Put a guard in his way. And then maybe we could play a Dark Seducer next turn. But honestly, guys, if you guys have never used Skeever Infestation before, it's really fun when you combo it with Mushroom Tower. It's like one of the best, uh, best card combos out there. And I'm curious why he did that. I don't remember what health this was at, but I don't believe I could have killed it. No, I could have killed it, couldn't I? Giant's Camp. Okay, I kind of see what he's up to here. We definitely need to get our... Uh, ooh, three, six, eight. Hmm... Yeah, we're going to be playing from behind by a little bit. Throw that over there. And I'm actually going to block off this lane. Controversial option. But I don't want this 6-4 being uncontested, because we have 4 damage over here to deal with this 6-4. And then uh, if he gets kind of cocky in the next few turns, we can nuke him. Right now I don't see the reason to, but... I'd like to have a higher advantage on him before we blow up the board. Because right now it's kind of it's kind of an equal match. I mean we're both at twenty seven.
and he's already crushed all of his all of his ring charges. So unless he's got more dwarven armaments, well, wow. okay, close call was not something that I was expecting. I've been seeing a lot more giants camp this uh, this month than I have been before, and I think that that's because uh, it was the monthly last month, I, I believe, anyway. Okay. All things considered, that's a pretty good way for him to have played his turn for me. So we'll kill this. Um, then I think it's just Dark Seducer. He's only got two cards, so we'll see what he's up to. Usually I would try to use my full Magicka with playing the Barrow Stalker somewhere, but I would like to option it as a guard maybe in this lane if we need it later. Really having the red year in hand changes everything. So if he plays a uh, Grumite on us, then we're going to be in actual trouble. Mm. Okay. I don't know if I understand the play there. <laughs> I would have Archer's Gambit. I would have played it on this guy, right? I think that's the thing that you're supposed to do in that situation. So if I hit him, he's going to go up to 40, and then I'm going to go up to 34. This is totally an, this is totally not red. Oh my god, I can't speak. This is totally not red year worthy yet. Okay. Uh, actually, this thing presents more of a threat in my eyes than the than that one. This does have 10, doesn't it? Yeah, the giant's camp is really oppressive against us. So we're going to fear totem that and... Uh, we're just going to sit here and see what we can do. Normally I don't like to play the Mushroom Tower without at least doing one thing first, but... Like one action while it's out, but I don't really have much choice here. I always forget about the Necromancer's Amulets. Ooh, Squish the Wimpy. That's a good one. And I'm willing to lay down Dark Seducer here to kind of block him up. Plug the lane. He is very committed to trying to keep that thing alive. Yikes. Okay. Uh, well, he's shackled for a turn, right? So we can get our skeevers going, finally. And we'll see what he's up to. But now we've kind of got our board set up with a bunch of rats, and uh, I don't know if there's much that he can do about it, because he's at one card per turn, and I'm certainly not going to hit him anytime soon. I mean, we've got five runes, four supports, yeah. There's our Unstoppable Rage as well. I think we just play Barrow Stalker. I'll, I'll poke him a little bit. But I know for a fact this guy does not have a Wilds Incarnate in his deck, so 
There's really no need for me to do anything here. Does this drain? It does. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Wow. A lot of low value fear totems this game. Okay. He's at 9 attack and 11 defense. Well, I'm just excited to get more skeepers on the board. That's all that I'm here for. I'll sacrifice this guy. Crash that into him. And now if we kill the whole board with the red ear, we gain 16 health. Close to. We gain 14 health. Ooh. That would be kind of a good card. <laughs> if we had 1-1 one, one skeevers. I don't think we're going to have too much trouble for the rest of the match. Do that. I'll hit him. Just a few times. Generate more skeevers. And uh, if he doesn't have, like, Dishnikyal archers or something in his deck to take out my supports, I think we just kind of win. So yeah, that's the power of... I don't know if you want to call it support skeever or skeever betray, but it's one of my favorite decks. We're on turn 15 currently. So if you can survive this long, I mean, it's actually kind of a fun and viable... I, I don't know if I should say viable, but it's fun, you know? Man, he needs to stop playing cards. <laughs> he needs to just amass a bunch of them, and then he can play them all at once, but... Okay. Would it be merciful of me to, like, kill him now? I say as I instantly pass the turn. Ooh. That's pretty good. And... What? He destroyed my hist grove. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, you know what we do here now? Is we... Unstoppable rage. And we betray... This. And then we just do it again. Because I'm all about drawing those cards. One, two, three. More Skeevers. If he lets this game continue to go on, I'd be I'd be very surprised. I feel kind of mean staying here, but it's also like it's a fun match. It's one sided fun for sure, but I think it's fun. Uh we're gonna kill this Skeever, because that's gonna give us a card. And uh, I'm going to kill his giant scamp. Man. I think I'm the villain of this match. I'll hit him. We'll give him some cards. Yeah, we'll give him a few cards. Because I, I can't just sit here and, and be the... The fun police. <laughs> oh god the funny part about this deck is it's kind of immune to this card because we use an action to generate all of our creatures 
Okay. Uh, Squish the Wimpy only works on enemy creatures. So I'm going to play the Mummy down. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll do that. See how high we can get our Skeevers next turn. The reason that I put the Mummy down is because I can kill him with Cicero without Cicero dying. I could potentially get a ton of cards. Yeah, because he seems he seems worried about the wrong cards. Mm, okay, that's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Do I want more Ciceros? I'll take more Ciceros, I guess. I don't know what else I would take more of at this point. <laughs> um, summon more Skeevers. Kill off this one. We'll summon an 11 over there. So how many Skeever infestations have we generated? We've got, we've got six. And a ton of Skeevers in the discard pile. From here on out, any skeever that we pull will uh, will survive the red year now. Oh my god. <laughs> Should I nuke the board and then journey to Sovngarde? Would that be evil? Might be evil. But what other opportunity am I going to have? Uh... Yeah, fuck it. We'll kill... Uh, it doesn't matter. We'll do a bunch of them. I could play the red year. <laughs> play the red year. Sacrifice. You. And then we'll play the red year again. We just did a solid 100 and... 10 health and we have let's count how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 skeevers in our discard pile with a total of seven skeever infestations <laughs> I think they play it as could ease. Oh, is he going to get rid of... Uh... Yeah, okay, that's the right play. That is absolutely the right play. Okay, now we have a battle on our hands. We're going to journey to Sovngarde, though. I don't think we're ever going to see the... Uh... I don't think we're ever going to see the other Mushroom Tower in our deck now, but... Our man's trying to make a comeback, and I like it. Ooh. Come on, kill him. Wow, he's got a lot of lethal creatures in his deck. I wonder if we could outlast him. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm just out here trying to see how many skeevers I can get. <laughs> and he's letting me, so... 
Okay, he's going to silence my skeever. There's Cicero. Literally can't even kill. Can't even kill a skeever. And survive at this point. Okay. Wow, we're finding cards that aren't skeevers still. I mean, most of our deck is skeevers, isn't it? We've got 81 cards. <laughs> most of our deck is filled of skeevers. So the fact that we found a little girl in the Barrow Stalker is incredible to me. Flame Spear Dragon. That's a cool combo. Let's see what else we get. Another Cicero. <laughs> um, we'll play the Skeever Infestation. And then I think we play the Skeever here because he'll die to the Flame Spear Dragon. So yeah, that'll work. And this is actually our Cicero that... Oh wait, no. Okay, this one was created by Galen. This was the one from Journey. That's our Journey to Sabengard Cicero. So what are you waiting for? I don't know. Something amazing, I guess. He's going to gain some health back for sure. Galen the Shelterer. It's another Skeever. <laughs> I should have shoveled him in with Galen. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit him. Um, I'm going to say good game, and then I'm going to concede, because I was the real winner of that match. I think that after all that that he put up with, I'm okay to give him the win. I have I, I had to end it at some point. Like We could have literally done that for ages, but I'm going to call it there. We're going to move into a new match, because that was a lot of fun. All right, we're up against Adrenal Fix, the adorable. They are on... Ooh, they're on Dominion, which I kind of like because they don't have support removal here. Outside of the Dreg, I guess, that everyone has access to, but regularly you wouldn't have support removal in a Dominion deck. So we'll see what they're able to, to get up to here. Necromancer's Amulet right off the bat. There's a Fighter's Guild Recruit. Okay, I'll rapid shot that. We'll see what we can get here. Double Necromancer's Amulet. That actually uh, was really nice to have in the last match. Wow. Okay, so maybe on some kind of like tokens empower type deck. We take a little bit longer to set up, and by a little bit longer, I mean extraordinarily, exponentially longer. I see you're in need of my wisdom. Yeah. Wow. I will end you. There's our mushroom tower, though. And there is the night mommy. So we can play both of those together on one turn. Just to get a handful of our supports down. Uh, yeah. We'll play that. Like, there's nothing else he can really do on his turn with one Magicka. I guess he could do that. 
You most certainly could. Okay, so things have changed a little bit. I think we want to fear totem this. I know that he could give more. Uh... Hmm. It's either fear totem or barrow stalker. I think it's, it's. I think it's fear totem. I don't like this thing having ward. If this if this gets ward, it's kind of okay. Thank you. Uh huh. I wish there was a button that said you're welcome. Oh, he's got double Royal Sage. That's very cool. Just no charge for these two. Okay, those are all perfectly fine. So we kill this. Yeah. We kill this, we squish the Wimpy. So easy... Then we squish the Wimpy onto this one. Uh, maybe you should have played the Night Mother before all this, but... Then I think we'll also pop this guy's ward and... Not stabilize, but semi-stabilize. Okay. This feels a little unnecessary. When you could have just put them on the Royal Sage over there. Hmm. Well, we have Barrow Stalker Cicero. That's pretty much where we're at. If I can unstoppable rage over here, that'd be nice. That'd be ideal. Cicero's generally going to make him play in the field lane, yeah. So he's got five damage over there. Um, play the Night Mother. The Night Woman. Do that. And Dark Seducer should be pretty helpful for us. Now we've drawn our green packed ambusher. We already have one in the discard pile, so the likelihood of us hitting another one on prophecy is pretty low. And he just pulled the win out with the tome. Yeah, I was thinking that it was going to be a good idea to like put down some some skeevers or something to gain some extra health from when he killed them, but I don't know. I think we fought as well as we could have against him there, to be honest. I don't know if there was a whole lot more that could have been done. Uh, we're up against a Lazarus. The Lazarus is on the warrior. They are the Shivering in their title. We're going to throw all this stuff back. And uh, they've got a 50-card deck. Okay, the red you're off early. Pretty good. We have a usable card in hand, too, and a card to boost our Magicka. So, yeah, Green Pact Ambusher. Uh, it's the card that I was thinking of. Stormcloak. Stormcloak Vanguard really sucks. Really sucks to see. We're going to play away from the Stormcloak Vanguard, and I'm going to hope that my little girl can get down unharmed. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> More cool gatekeeper ass. Okay. Little girl goes over here. We'll kill that. Then hopefully he doesn't have a filthy warrior silence effect uh, for my little girl, but there usually is something. Okay. This guy's on fully premium cards, it would seem. I think we'll play Squish the Wimpy. I gain a ton of health. Or we could draw a card with Disciple. No. If 
friendly creature. Or we could just lay the Hist Grove down. I think I like that play. I like that because it gets us closer to the Red Ear, especially since we have two Hist Groves in our inventory. And see, if we didn't do that, he likely would have played Stormcloak Battalion eventually and then put the Enchanted Plate on that, so... Okay. He's going to try to rush us down. There's another little girl. At this point, I'm trying to make it to turn 10. Turn 9, really, with our ring. So I'm going to attempt to get the little girl down again. I don't know about you guys, but I, I do really enjoy the beast form decks. Okay... Do a skeever infestation that would actually kill one of these guys. Funnily enough, I think that's what we'll do. So that drops him down to uh, 11 damage on board, which is a lot better to see than what he had previously. And our our little girl there completely shifted uh, his damage away. So he probably would have used a crushing blow on our face, but we were able to induce it elsewhere. And we unfortunately have to use the red ear here, but I'm hoping we can come back from it. We throw Cicero down somewhere for sure. Rapid shot, blood crazed, Cicero. Yeah, he's, he's nothing but reach though. This is going to be hard. Okay, new plan. Uh, rapid shot. Squish the wimpy. It's probably going to be impossible for us to come back from this. He just needs one afflicted elite or crushing blow or more more cool gatekeeper. Uh, Stormcloak Vanguard <laughs> really can save him here so I know that I spent a lot of time oh nice yeah I know that I spent a lot of time uh, messing with that guy in that first match but it would be nice if he would just kill me already but this is my karma uh yeah don't really have anything I can do here. So we'll just kind of dump our hand and leave. The victory is yours. Uh, all right, we're up against Charybdis 78. They are the Miraculous, and they're on Empire, which is uh, maybe my least favorite deck to go up against. It's just a really, really toxic color combo. There's the red ear in our opening hand, and that worked out well for us before, so maybe Charybdis doesn't have an easy start playing Empire somehow. Yep, hello. We do have the Necromancer's Amulet in hand as well, which is pretty cool. I see your Barrow Stalker, and I raise you one Barrow Stalker. Now, I'd hope that he hits me and I hit him, uh, but... If he hits me, then I hope that I can play my Blood Crazed before I hit him as well. Draw a card out of the whole ordeal. Okay. Yeah, Blood Crazed is still the move. We got our Mushroom Tower. Things are looking okay. Our opponent did have 75 cards, and he's off to a... Fairly typical Empire start. It's wasting a Territorial Viper. There's the Word Wall. I haven't seen someone play Dragons in a little while, mostly because I haven't been playing so much recently. Uh, well, shucks. I guess Hist Grove.
<laughs> it's so easy. Oh my god. Well. We'll see what we can do against this, but... I'm guessing we can't do much. Oh, Dragon Aspect. That's not the one he upgraded, though. He's got to wait till next turn to play that card that he grabbed. That evil, evil card. Uh, if he pulls Call Granteed, I'll want the Dishnikyal Archer for the uh, Hall of the Colossus. Journey to Sovereign Guard. Might have made sense to put the Dishnikyal Archer over here, but it's it's too late. There it is. Level two shout. Mulamnir, epic. Still pretty early into the game, though. Galen is unusable currently. We'll see if he plays his other Call Dragon. My ideal universe. Oh, never mind. Oh. What? Okay. Um, my ideal universe currently is that he just. Oh, wait, I should have put that in my hand and then Galen did. Man, that was dumb. Uh, my ideal universe, though, as I was saying, is that he plays his whole hand and we just get to play the red year on it. Yeah, I'll play Galen on my Barrow Stalkers, I guess. Throw this down. And then we'll get the Skeevers going. That'll at least gain us some health. We get rid of his word wall, so we have kind of a full board now. And at least if we do have to red here, it will gain us some health, depending on how many creatures are left. I could have even opted to squish the Wimpy on this thing, but it didn't really feel necessary. Manticore is pretty rough. He is giving me cards, though. I do like that. Uh, well. Yeah, I guess we play like this. <laughs> uh, squish the Wimpy on you. Sacrifice you. Squish the Wimpy on you. Kill you. Hit him and then play some skeevers. So we are actually getting a board state, which is good. We do have a ton of skeever infestations in the deck now, though. Okay. Just gaining me more health. I appreciate it. Speak, Did he? So he grabbed a dragon aspect and a call dragon from that. I'll play my hist grove, and uh, I'll play this barrow stalker because it's meaningless to me. Yeah, I'm gonna hit him a little bit. I think I want to try to win this one. I'm not really gonna feel bad when. Well, I shouldn't say win, but if I beat this guy, I'm not really going to feel bad. At least not like how I felt with the first guy. But yeah, we have Journey in hand. There's our Night Talon Lord, which we, we really didn't see. 
in the previous game. And we've got one squish down, uh, so really we want to pair our Knight Down Lord with a Squish of the Wimpy if possible. But he could have a new era in his deck, so we're just gonna we're just gonna play as if he has that. We've got 20 damage on board. So we'll see if we can beat him. I'm not sure if we can. He's going to word wall something. There's a new era. Yep. So I'm glad we didn't play anything too crazy. A new era is such a bullshit card, though. I will stand by that. Okay, and he's getting rid of my... My mushroom tower. Probably bringing back Mulamnir. Yeah. Alrighty. I don't really want any more skeevers in the deck if I'm actually going to try to be competitive about this. Uh, I think this is a perfectly acceptable number of creatures to play Journey onto. So we got a bunch of Skeevers back into the deck, but more importantly, we got uh, Cicero, Galen, Dishnik Yal, Little Girl. And fortunately, there's not a whole lot that he's going to be able to do about it. So bringing this down to a 9 is really, really helpful. And more specifically, a 9 without, uh, a nine without that Slay ability. And then I will put Skeevers down this time because I need some stuff to be able to kill this. But it's very hard to justify playing the red year when it's only for one creature, so I'm trying to, like, use my options. And he's taken out all of my supports. That's all three aspects of Azura, or not aspects, edicts of Azura. I was getting confused with dragon aspect. So now, uh, we really need to get going. So we'll kill him. Lay this down, and then I'll play a Dark Seducer. We are at 53 cards in our deck. He's going to Javelin me, that's okay. Another Histgrove. I should have played a uh, a target for my Night Mother, but something tells me we're not going to get that to go off this game. There's Alien Guardians, so I think that's a pretty good red ear target because those cards are absolutely busted. Uh, but we'll see really quickly if I can draw anything else here to help out. Necromancer's Amulet is actually pretty good here. Um, yeah, I think we have to. That brings us up to 17 at least. I do genuinely think that Aeliad Guardians is a... Uh, I don't know I don't know what to say about Alien Guardians anymore that hasn't been said. Lay down Cicero. Probably just gets Javelin or something, but he is uh he's out of edicts at least. Okay. Well that does suck, but we can at least uh Fear Totem that away. For now. Bump him back into his hand. If I can draw an Unstoppable Rage, uh, I could gain a ton of health and get a ton of board presence. But now it's a matter of digging through all the goddamn skeevers in my deck to try to find something. See, and this is why... This right here is why I don't like Empire, because... Everything on his board was generated by me. 
and part of that you can blame on me with the targets, but like, I think that's really, really stupid. We'll see if we can steal his Mirak back though with our Knight Talon Lord. And no, we can't. <laughs> no, we cannot. Well, he killed two creatures for me this turn. And he did actually break a rune to give me a card. Uh, but that's not going to be enough. So we'll have to kill this. Uh, but it's game over, basically. So that's too bad. Uh, this is your daily reminder to stop playing Empire. It's just as despicable as playing Invade, if not worse. I mean, Invade rewards stupid gameplay, but like this rewards you just making your opponent feel like shit. <laughs> like, I don't even want to play anymore after playing that match, because he just... It's literally all removal, steal, and uh, unfair creatures, so... Oh well. <laughs> Ooh, this is, uh, that's an opening hand. The amount of times that I've had the red year in my opening hand is disgusting. We're up against Lead Driver, their Master of Mirrors 75 card Empire deck. Probably very similar to the one that we just faced. Uh, not the best opening hand I've ever had. Okay. I don't like seeing that guy necessarily, but there's nothing I can really do about it. Um, I don't get these up to a 3-5. I like that. Okay, there's a normal little girl. I think we can hold off on breaking a ring. Charge. Okay, we're gonna play. Wow. Uh, Why don't you take a seat right over there? Okay. Uh, we're going to play a game called Edict of Azura or Piercing Javelin. It's going to be guessing what's going to kill this. I'll do what I can. Oh, nothing. That was gracious of him. Uh, yeah. I think the Venom Tongue's the right move here. I'm going to kill this before it can get any further boosted. I read this guy's name is Lead Driver. It's probably Lead Driver, right? That would make more sense. That play that he just did there makes me really wonder what he's got going on in his hand. Huh. 
Okay. Should I get Skeever Infestation going right now, or should I wait? I think I should wait. Okay, not too bad. And he hits a prophecy. Yeah, that's about right. Well, uh, do a skeever infestation and then a barrow stalker. The reason for that play, sorry, I was uh, I was talking to my dad on the phone, I was texting him. Uh, the reason for that play is we can put our Disciple of Namira over here and then kill uh, at least a creature. Get some cards with our Disciple of Namira. Alright. Okay, so we can get two cards out of our Disciple of Namira. Very cool. And I think I will play my Venom Tongue there. And we get the Squish the Wimpy and the Dark Seducer. We also have the Red Year coming up. Man, I feel like Manticora, I haven't seen a whole lot of Manticoras recently. But two in the past two games, so that's cool. Uh, we could play... Fork is minus two. So we could gain some cards. I think that's what we'll do. I think that's the play. I don't really need to gain cards. I just need to kind of maintain some some semblance of board control. If he has a... Uh, what's that one card? Finish off? Oh. Same thing, basically. Okay, all right. That's essentially what I needed to happen. So I think we just kind of win now. So he's got one card in his hand, and we've got a ton. So we'll do that, and then we've got 11 Magicka coming up next turn. So I think Tree Minder, Little Girl. No, we actually don't need to play Little Girl yet. So Tree Minder. I really don't want to start shuffling Skeever Infestations in unless I need to. I kind of need to right now. I played two. Okay, so there's still like a decent chunk of things that I haven't seen in my deck yet. Uh, Night Mother's good. Rapid shot this guy. That was fought well. I wonder what he means by that. What do you mean by that? Chimera, spirit of the sky, guide us. Fervor, of course. Uh, hmm. I'm not going to destroy that yet. I'm going to hold up and wait just a sec. And this guy is doing uh, the correct move of kind of holding on to his hand. That first guy that we faced against, he was uh, he was just playing whatever. Okay, I'm going to play a Dishnikyal Archer, shoot that. 
and play that over there. I think I will do the little girl as well. Okay, I'm just going to arrest that. How rude. He's got 22 Magicka. And a spider layer. Okay. Uh, at this point, we've got two Ageless Vampires, a Dark Seducer. I think we'll throw down Cicero. And I will actually squish the Wimpy. Play that tree minder there. Okay, yeah, we'll see if, uh, if our opponent quits or not. There's the mushroom tower, so now we can actually get going with the deck. Do a rapid shot. shot. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. That's honestly like the rational thing to do. Oh my god, he hit a prophecy. These games go on forever when the opponent leaves. Oh, put me to sleep. Uh, we'll go like this. Like this, and like this. Good game, lead driver. Okay, we're up against Jode H... Berg. Jod H. Berg. Something like that. Uh, this is actually maybe the most normal starting hand that we've had, and I'm down to have it. Down to keep it. Well met, Marsh friend. Yeah, well met. Uh, this guy's on Guild Sworn. He is the Jack of Trades, and he's on 75 cards. So we'll see... We'll see what kind of guild sworn he's on, I suppose. Uh, we'll play a tree minder first. If he doesn't play anything next turn, it's Hist Grove. If he does, it's Galen. Oh, well, now I'm so sorry. It's Dishnik, y'all. Like, I hate doing that to people, but you kind of have to. I don't like him taking all those out of my deck, though. It's kind of rude. So what was going to be Galen is now going to be Blood Crazed Daedroth or Hist Grove or Necromancer's Amulet. So many decisions to make here. I think we do a Hist Grove now, that way next turn we have uh, Blood Crazed or Necromancer at our disposal. And we're going to have to say goodbye to the three Dishnik Yal archers that we have in our deck. Tiny Dragon.
shuffle in more Daedroths, and then we'll place one down. And we'll hope that <laughs> he doesn't have a way to kill this with his uh, with his black dragon. Oh, actually, no, he will. I don't know why I just did that. That was very stupid. Uh, okay. Well, we can play a Venom Tongue and a Amulet, I suppose. I'm curious as to what he's going to kill with the Black Dragon. Probably my Daedroth, right? He's going to discard so many. I thought this had a Banish effect on it. But it's just discard. Damn. One, two, three, and four. That was good. I appreciate that this guy is on Singleton Guild's one. I don't think I really ever see that happen. And we can go for the Blood Crazed Disciple play. The classic Blood Craze Day Drought into Disciple of Namira. Getting rid of my discard pile actually does something to me on this uh, particular deck. I think we'll kill that. And then I think we'll also wait. So not having those Daedroth in my deck, I mean, it's kind of a boon, right? Because now we're closer to getting Mushroom Tower and, and everything, but it's also not really something that I wanted to happen. There's a Hist Grove. What turn are we on? We're on turn nine. Uh, I'll have two sets of... Um, Two sets of, what are they called? Swamp Leviathans. By next turn. Okay. He's got to kill this. It's a revered dragon. Oh, he doesn't care. I guess he doesn't have to kill that. It's just a suggestion. Oh. Ooh. Cicero Unstoppable Rage could could do something. Uh Man, wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, I think Cicero Unstoppable <laughs> Rage might be the way to go. Or just Cicero uh squish the wimpy. Really, I'd like to have a Mushroom Tower up for this. Okay, Cicero, Unstoppable Rage. Yeah, that'll that'll gain me six health and draw me... How many cards does he draw? It'll draw me six cards, gain me six health. We have seven in hand. So we're going to have too many cards. We're going to overdraw some. Um, Pretty flowers. yeah, I think we have to do this. By the yeah, that was just, it was necessary. Nicely done. Thank you. My gratitude. Uh, unfortunately, ooh, we, oh no, god damn it, oh no! <laughs> Those all sucked to have overdrawn. Okay, well, we at least got the Night Mother. That could be our new win condition. But goddamn, we lost... We lost our third Hist Grove. We lost one of our Mushroom Towers. We lost our Journey to Sovngarde. And we lost another <laughs> Dark Seducer. Damn. Uh, okay. 
Well, in an effort to play stuff from out of my hand, I think we're going to do that. I should have played the Night Mother too, shouldn't I? Not Crean. That I would not mind using Night Talon Lord to kill. I think that would be a fine case of using Night Talon Lord. Okay, Night Mother goes down. Uh... I think we just hit it with this. That way we can draw a card. We're at 11 cards. <laughs> We're at 11 goddamn cards. Well, we'll see. He hits a prophecy. We'll see what he can do. Destroys my... Okay, that's fine. We can do this and draw a few more cards. Not that we really necessarily wanted to do that, but... And then we'll lay down that, and we'll lay down our green backed Ambusher. And we draw our Mushroom Tower. Okay, cool. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, he didn't kill either of my supports. This guy's a real one. How many Skeever infestations did I lose? I don't think I played any. It's hard to tell because he played that Memory Wraith on us. I think he's debating about leaving. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know what I wouldn't mind doing is Night Talon Lord onto Abner. Do I have enough for all that? I don't. Oh, he's just going to leave. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I think that's where I'm going to call it for the video, guys. Uh, I, I hope that you enjoyed the deck. This is one of my favorite decks of all time. I really enjoy playing it. I just, I'm sure that people have done this before, but I thought of the synergy one day of Mushroom Tower. Like, what can I play Mushroom Tower on? And then I found the Skeever Infestation. I was like, holy shit, that would be hilarious. So, yeah, it, it gets up to crazy, <laughs> crazy proportions, as you can see. Uh, you don't always have to play it with the Skeevers, but it makes the most sense to play it with the Skeevers. Uh, we won that last match by not really using many Skeevers at all, but that was kind of just a fluke. That was really uh, that was really the power of Unstoppable Rage more than anything else. Uh, but yeah, so that's the deck. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching it. I thought that it was really fun to uh, to kind of play with, and I really I've tried recording videos on this before, and it just uh, it hasn't really worked out in the past because it's a very difficult deck to play. I mean, if you play this yourself, expect to lose a lot of matches. I'm going to include a majority of the losses, at least the, the interesting ones. Yeah, with that said, please uh, feel free to let me know how you felt about the video in the comments. I'm really looking forward to talking to you guys again. It's been a little while since I've been kind of in the mood to record and have really been back in it. So I'm hoping that going forward, I'll be able to kind of make some more high quality videos as the... Uh, as the rest of July goes on. So thank you guys. I appreciate your viewership as always. And to those of you that made it to the end of the video, you guys rock. So I'll see you guys in the comments below and peace out.